If you're designing a private fleet CNG refueling station, you need a cost-effective solution to balance your refueling capacity and energy consumption. And an innovative compression equipment from a company in Oregon is probably the solution you're looking for. Onboard Dynamics on the NGV World Podcast, Episode 22. Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to the NGV World Podcast. I'm your host, Ricardo Carmona, and I'm very, very excited for today's episode. I can guarantee you it will be filled with much, much innovation. It would be very, very interesting regarding gas compression technology. Another uh, team that, that it's uh, really, really interesting to me and I'm really glad to share this with you guys but before we start let me tell you that you can find all the details of this episode and everything we mention uh, only visiting ricardocarmona.io slash episode 21 and there you can find all the pictures all the videos all the links uh, of everything that we mention uh, all through the episode and please don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Remember, we are on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and there you will receive notifications for our next episodes. And now let's go to the main part of the show. Enjoy. <music> Hello everyone and welcome to the NGV World Podcast and with us today is Rita Hansen. She's the CEO at Onboard Dynamics Incorporated. Hello Rita, how are you? I'm good Ricardo, how are you? Very good Rita, it's a pleasure to have you uh, on the show and, and I want to know really more everything about Onboard Dynamics but first let's hear a little bit more about you, tell us about yourself and how did you get into the natural gas business? Well, thanks for inviting me to be here. I really uh, enjoy the fact that you reached out and uh, got a hold of us. So yes, my name is Rita Hansen. I'm the CEO and I'm a co-founder of Onboard Dynamics. And before I actually joined this company or, or co-founded the company, I had actually recently moved here to Bend, Oregon and was introduced to the professor at Oregon State University up at uh, the Oregon State Cascades campus here in Bend. And that's really mm -hmm. how I got invited and in joining into Onboard Dynamics was meeting the professor mm -hmm. who had the original innovation of this concept of, of yes. natural gas refueling. And, uh, and uh, but you had you didn't have any career in the in the natural gas business so far. And what what t tell us what what was that thing that speech that kind of uh, idea that really sparked your mind? I mean, uh, I mean, of course we we have heard at some point something about natural gas vehicles and uh, refueling. But what was that part that uh, that idea that really uh, liked uh, the bulb? Well, for me, it was the fact that I had been working and really engaged with alternative energy for most of mm. my career. So I'm an engineer mm. by training. Uh, I have my degree from engineering at the University of Washington up in Seattle. And for the last 15 years have been involved in many startups associated with alternative energy. So this is a super passion of mine. And I, like I said, when I relocated to Bend, Oregon, mm -hmm. I was introduced to the professor and with my co-founder, uh, my other co-founder, Jeff Whitwer, mm -hmm. together we were listening to the concept that he had, was thinking about and was being initially funded by ARPA-E, which is the Advanced Research Projects Agency mm -hmm. for Energy within the DOE. And we really felt that he had something that was worth exploring. So that was truly my first foray into natural gas and natural gas as a transportation fuel, but it was really all about the problem that he was trying to solve. All right. And tell us more about this 
um, this part of of the specific product or or idea that that you run into that he was trying to develop? What was uh, that first? Uh, let's say let the, those first uh, versions of what he was trying to do, and 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 how. At that point, we were talking about uh, around what year, Rita? That was about 2012, 2013. Right. Yes, right. the uh, yeah. the professor, Dr. Chris Hagen, had this concept that he was trying to solve around refueling infrastructure, solving mm -hmm. a critical lack of available and affordable natural gas vehicle refueling infrastructure here in the U.S. And that was what he had received his initial funding from ARPA-E to solve. And, his, and the idea at the time that he was thinking was, well, why not take the engine, the internal combustion engine on your vehicle mm -hmm. and harness that power to also make it behave like a compressor? So mm -hmm. the original innovation was to actually incorporate the compressor function into the engine. And that All was right. the original concept. At, that was very intriguing. It was very disruptive. It was very uh, out-of-the-box thinking. And RPE said, you know, we're going to give this, this professor some money to really try to prove mm -hmm. out that concept. And we were introduced, Jeff and I were introduced to him, oh, about eight or nine months into his program. And mm -hmm. he was looking for some thoughts and ideas and expertise around how to commercialize that idea. And here in Bend, being a small town, it mm -hmm. was, well, not too many of us <laughs> were, were around that could actually get together with the professor and say, you know, let's, let's talk about this. How would we commercialize this? So it was truly, that was the spark. That was the initial chemistry between the three of us to say, okay, well, let's, mm -hmm. let's take this concept and figure out how we want to commercialize that. And that's what started Onboard Dynamics. There, it, the whole name of Onboard Dynamics came from being onboard vehicle and trying to have a solution to solve the refueling infrastructure by incorporating the compressor onboard mm -hmm. your vehicle. And, uh, and that's what we were initially pursuing in the very beginning. All right. So, what what it's really interesting about the the product or the essence is that that you or this idea is trying to harness the block of an engine, right? So that that was uh, really sparked uh, also my my thoughts, and I say like, oh wow, I hadn't thought about about this in this way. But can you tell us uh, or or describe to the audience what does it mean to to put the compressor in the same block of the of the engine how would you put it into words yes i can do that i can speak to to the layman's part of this is mm -hmm. that essentially what we were doing is we were taking a v8 engine and we were taking one bank of the cylinders mm -hmm. and taking those cylinders and actually doing the stages of compression within those cylinders. So in the initial versions or the earlier versions, we were doing just two stages of compression within the engine and then coming out at about 900 to 1,000 PSI and finishing the remaining compression up going up to 3,600 PSI in, a, in an external topping device. But the core bringing in a low pressure natural gas service at about five PSI and then taking it up to a thousand, that act of compression was happening within one bank of the a V8 right. engine. The other bank of the V8 engine was providing the power. So you were consuming right. natural gas and providing the power to do the compression with, on the other bank. And it was uh, in the initial forms when it was all on board vehicle, we were doing the, the actual cylinders were um, were pretty were very integrated into the entire block. Now mm -hmm. that we after about two or three years, we started talking with customers and really figuring that path out to commercialization. And through that process, we discovered that what was really needed in the marketplace was not so much the onboard vehicle compression, but really. Mm -hmm utilizing that same concept and having that engine 
be on a uh, what we call a, a trailer or a, mm-hmm. or a mobile platform and being separate from the engine, but really providing that act of compression without the need for electricity. So somewhat like an engine driven compressor, but in our mm-hmm. case, it was integrated all in one in one block. All right. So uh, w- one question that uh, remained in, in this really good uh, explanation, I think that it was, it's really clear, but I'm, I'm going to leave I'm going to leave uh, a couple videos that I, that I that you guys provided and some pictures that will make it super clear. It's going to be uh, in the podcast note in the podcast notes that uh, I'm going to leave leave in and in the description of this episode because I want you to uh, I want you guys in, uh, in the audience to to picture this kind of B B shape engine and one of the uh, blocks as you mentioned it's carrying actually the the part the cylinders uh, and they're not actually being used for for the combustion part but uh, rather than the use it used for the compression part it's really clever and um, what i wanted to learn a little bit more you mentioned that you get you, you get for super low pressure uh, up to a dozen and how do you get the final the final compression uh, in the system rita well today our system The, the product that we have now commercialized and we're selling into the marketplace does go up to 3,600 PSI. It was the earlier version when we oh. were just onboard vehicle that we couldn't do, we couldn't go all the way up to 3,600 PSI within the engine as it was onboard vehicle. But now our product today, the GoFlow CNG80 natural gas compressor, it goes from 5 PSI up to 3,600 PSI without a The, it, it, going through all four stages of compression within our block. That's amazing. Yeah, that 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 really, it's really interesting because you are tackling couple a couple uh, factors here. I mean, uh, I think one of them it's the simplicity. I believe. Uh, I mean, the the monoblock part. You have only one. Um, Equipment, including both uh, both elements, that is really really interesting. I I haven't seen that before. And the other part is that you are actually, uh, of course, are tackling the the part of you don't need any external energy connected to the compressor. That is really good. And let's talk a little bit more ab- about that part. I mean, what what actually are seeing it from the consumer part? What are What are those kind of ideal clients that you were aiming in that moment uh, while developing the the prototype? Uh, what were what what those clients uh, those co- those customers looked like, and why specifically a solution uh, within a trailer, as you mentioned, uh, maybe that um, in that size, a specific size, could solve the problem? Why? Why? What was the picture in back then? Yeah, that's a really good question, Ricardo. We were really targeting smaller fleets or fleets that had a need for about three to four hundred, what we call GGEs per day. Mm-hmm. So uh, the flow rate on our system is roughly 30 to 35 GGEs per hour, or 80 SCFM as a rule, and. Mm-hmm. And so we were targeting fleets for the fleet refueling component or for the fleet refueling application that really had that need to be able to not have their own electrical service brought in for whatever reason, just for cost or for lack of, of having it available to them in their yard. Mm-hmm. And But they had the natural gas service. And so mm-hmm. we were able to to demonstrate to those types of fleets that, listen, here's a readily available solution for you that you can have your own behind the fence compressor Mm -hmm. that doesn't require you to have electrical service, especially in areas where electrical rates are high or where you have peak demand and you're doing your refueling in the evening to nighttime hours. So Mm -hmm. that that would be a, a, a very attractive 
fleet application for us. And it was just really targeting the smaller fleets, even large fleet operators who had smaller yards and or mm-hmm. wanted to be able to move their assets around or, or, or be able to, to accommodate fleet sizes that fluctuate. The other thing that we we find now we have multiple multiple applications, but what we were targeting targeting at first mm-hmm. was clearly those smaller fleets that wanted to have their own behind the fence refueling solution. And, w- and a question that comes to my mind is, in those small fleets that we're talking about, I'm calculating here, but correct me if I'm wrong. It, it's kind of maybe around up to eighty. Uh, vehicles on like if they are sedan type or, or smaller and if they are around maybe 10 heavy duty vehicles i think it's it's that the kind of size we're talking about in that first uh developments that you were targeting but in those cases what do you think uh or or, or what they were thinking that um uh, let's say forbid them to to go to another type of solution i mean um, it's it, it. You were also trying to tackle some investment, uh, let's say uh, initial investment, uh, higher prices that that the competition maybe uh, were another solutions for let's say conventional compressors and stuff. Uh, could place in those uh, behind the behind the fence, like you mentioned, uh, solutions. I mean, is is what what actually forbid them to go to another type of solution that you guys. Uh, could provide? Well, mostly it was the electrical service. So Mm -hmm. if they already had electrical service, you know, we we really tried to price our system to be competitive. But Mm -hmm. looking at CapEx and OpEx, we would always sit down with these potential customers and say, okay, so can you bring in the electrical service that you need for to run your, Mm -hmm. to to bring in an electrical driven compressor? Mm -hmm. Do you have that capability to do that here in your yard? And taking a look at all the costs associated with that, so just Mm -hmm. on a pure CapEx perspective, and then looking at the OpEx of running an electrical-driven compressor versus running just on natural gas. And so in many, many cases, we were able to demonstrate that doing a natural gas driven compressor solution like ours was much more cost effective. Yeah, that, that is very important because uh, we, we in, in, I mean, for example, in my case that I uh, do this every, every month of the year, we're developing new stations and we are developing new solutions. Of course, we, we kind of understand what are the, the possible choices and you guys did a, did a great job in, in trying to exactly understand what is the, the, the breakdown of those costs uh, regarding CapEx and OPEX. And, and now I understand that, of course, you got so many sites. And in some, uh, in some of those sites, you don't expect, for example, to grow uh, to maybe be in a bigger uh, site. But you, would you need to serve those, those uh, facilities in one, what what can you do? What cost effective solution you have, and that's uh, pretty pretty interesting what you're doing, and it uh, it, it it really I, I with that explanation I really understand what actually are are these applications. But right now that let's move the let's move the timeline to uh, until today. Actually, uh, at this point in this uh, current time, what uh, are the pro- what is kind of the size of the product that you have right now and what kind of applications are you being are you implementing or, or studying that that you guys think that that are, are a big success yeah that's a really that's really great so we launched our product in late 2018 with our first customer after doing a very successful what we call our D program with socal gas right. so it was a research mm-hmm development and demonstration program that we did in 2018 with them with a couple of school districts. But then we sold our first unit in late 2018. And we have uh, about six units out there right now in in the field. And Mm -hmm. we are, uh, we have many different applications. And it's, it's really kind of exciting. Half our customers are fleet operators, the other half are natural gas utilities. 
And mm -hmm. in some cases, the natural gas utilities are using our system as a backup for their CNG stations. Uh, we actually mm -hmm. have one happening right now where the, the utility is using our system to back up their their electric driven no, presser station. Driven. Uh, we have a system in place right now today that is taking gas out of a tube trailer and uh, hold, hold on, okay. hold on one, sec one second there, because that's really interesting that, that part uh, that you're backing up. What kind of size uh, uh, of compressor, electrical driven compressor are you backing in this uh, installation just for, for the audience to understand? Uh, how how can you fit in this? I mean, is it a, is that a big fleet? Is that a medium fleet? What type of compressor are you kind of uh, substituting there temporarily for? I would say it's a medium fleet, and so right. we are providing backup. So we're running constantly in order to provide the. The, we, we normally would be in a time filled application, but in this particular mm -hmm. case, we're just mm -hmm. we're running constantly in order mm -hmm. to fill the demand, and we're uh, so we're we're actually fueling vehicles, but we're also refilling a tank that's on site. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's oh, that's to help, right? That's to help the actual station operator. Um, but like I say, with a ADS CFM system. Or 30 mm -hmm. to 40 GGEs over 10 hours, we would be we would be able to satisfy three 300 to 400 gallons gasoline equivalent of natural gas for a particular fleet right. in a normal operation. But we can run 24/7. So, mm -hmm. but no, uh, <laughs> so I, I stopped you in the in the application yeah. part. So you, no, no, you no. Know. So <laughs> we have. Um, So, like I said, so so station backup is really important to a lot of utilities. Yep. Uh, we are right now we we have an application in North Dakota where we're taking natural gas out of a tube trailer, and mm -hmm. we are refueling vehicles from that from a tube trailer since they don't have low pressure natural gas service. So they're bringing in they're bringing it in in a tube trailer. And we're using that. We've also been in an application where we have actually been used for pipeline evacuation or blowdown. Oh. So that was really interesting. And that was for a utility. And it was a really great application. We showed up and, and it was great to get the phone call afterwards saying from the operator that, yep, your system did exactly what I needed it to be doing. We were on All a very right. tight schedule and we were able to, to evacuate gas out of the pipeline. And, and you actually and, put it into tube trailers, right? Right, right. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Um, But you know, so those are some of the different applications that we have. Uh, oh, we've had cases where we are supplementing an, a, an electric driven compressor, mm -hmm. right. where it's not they have more than a, they have more vehicles than they can provide the compression yeah. capacity for. So our system was there. I could use some, one of those uh, <laughs> one of those in, in that application specifically. For example, I have right now uh, it finished. Uh, I believe on Sunday, but we have a, a fuel station uh, that it serves around maybe near to 700 or 1,000 uh, light duty vehicles per day. Mm. So it's, it's a really, it's a really crowded station. And that station has two, two CNG compressors of about, of about uh, 300 HP each one. But uh, we are, actually um, had to put one under maintenance for five or six days. So in that stage, uh, in, in those six days, we had our peak hours. And in those peak hours, we had to shut down some of the dispensers because, of course, the demand uh, exceeded the, what, what we could compress at that point. But just, just a little bit, just for those couple hours maybe, and for just a little bit of... Of, of capacity, let's say, and I think that an application with where you put a single uh, compressor compressor unit for kind of help uh, with the demand at that point, it's really useful. And and, and I I don't stop uh, I can't stop thinking about the portability and and what that brings to the table in in kind of for my fixed system solution. Uh, 
database that I have in my mind that I, all right, I can can with this and with this, but this portable solution that it's really um, a super cool application and kind of a super uh, interesting feature. And I, I really want to congratulate you guys because I think that you na nailed some some uh, interesting spots there. Yeah, we believe that there's, for us, it's all about awareness and marketing and get the, getting the word out that we have this product. We just launched, as you saw, our latest product, which is the GoFill. Uh, and when it's coupled with the GoFlow, it becomes an instant refueling mm -hmm. station. And we just deployed it two weeks ago, pulled up into the yard where we're refueling a vehicle through the truck loan program at with Northwest Natural, but we showed up in the yard at 10 a.m. with the GoFlow and the GoFill. So the GoFill has a dryer mm -hmm. and it has a dispensing system for up to four vehicles. And mm -hmm. in the case of that particular yard, we were just refilling one or refueling one vehicle, the new Hylion truck. And we were up and running within hours. It was literally by 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. we were done techs came home and and they have a refueling station ready to go no electricity required that's great and one what i mean it's uh it, in that case we're also uh kind of you consider that solution for example in that case uh a time fill solution or it's kind of in the middle of what what we consider time fill and and kind of uh, medium medium speed feel because what, I, what I'm perceiving is that you got somewhat of a medium sized uh, compressor unit and I believe that we've seen before uh, many years since many years ago uh, another type of solution another type of equipment that may it's kind of super super time feel I, I even here in Mexico we we have uh, even a couple units of this uh, home refueling system, let's say, and we have kind of used these uh, these units to kind of uh, start to move in, to move uh, the market for taxi drivers and stuff. And we kind of put a couple of those uh, while we are building our first station in in some city of the country, but. The experience it's it's really not not that good. I mean, I think that we can it kind of serves uh, its purpose to to for them to understand that they can make it, but it's so slow that it takes uh, more than uh, ten hours or so to only fuel one vehicle, and then you get to you have to put another. I mean, it's it's kind of. Uh, super um, not comfortable for for our customers. So in that case, uh, you take it, you took that uh, one step above. You consider uh, regarding another solutions that are already in the market. Yeah. So I think if I understand your question, Ricardo, it's like we knew about some of that older technology that yeah, yeah. was very much uh, slow and time fill, and and we do have the the, mm -hmm. the GoFlow product can actually we have it on our roadmap to go to 5,000 PSI so that we can be a fast oh. fill solution as well. We just haven't had the customer demand yet to build one. Everybody's yeah. been, you know, we've been targeting our, our system sales towards a, the, the logical smaller fleets that want to be able to bring their vehicles home at night and do the refueling. So it's, as you know, being in a time filled application is a lot less expensive than doing a fast fill, but we, we have the capability to do it. So we're super excited about being able to build one of those for the first time. That's really interesting. And what, what other uh, stories do you have that, that you think that your customer uh, wants that, that you received that kind of uh, super quick deployment and, and super interesting uh, application they went like, all right, this is something that we weren't expected, we weren't expecting in, in, in the market. What kind? What other application can you tell us about? Oh goodness, uh, I, I, it's kind of interesting. I hear the stories all the time because people, we talk about our product, and and it becomes really apparent to me that what we've developed is a hammer, 
and and this mm-hmm. hammer can be used in for in multiple ways and so sometimes our customers tell us well here's what i'm going to do with your with your product <laughs> and so it's really uh it, it's great to hear that oh we, we hadn't thought about that or oh we didn't know we should be selling into mm-hmm. that market like the like the whole pipeline evacuation pipeline blowdown mm-hmm. challenges yeah. in in internal pipeline operations, we just didn't realize that our footprint and our ability Mm -hmm. to perform that function was going to be so well received. Uh, But probably one of my favorite stories is just the small independent waste hauler that we have down in Southern California, who Mm -hmm. to this day will tell customers and investors and stakeholders that it was the best business decision that he and his group ever made when they purchased the GoFlow uh, CNG80 compressor and installed it because today they're saving, they have, I think about 10 or 11 CNG trucks. They're running on renewable natural gas today. Mm -hmm. And he says uh, they're saving over $1,000 per truck in fuel costs per month alone. So $1,000 per month in fuel costs. But that that is considering the the reduction coming from diesel to CNG. That is, no, that's actually just considering going from just having his own behind the fence refueling solution because he was driving going to, to he a already public had, station. Right, right he was driving to a public station so oh he was, so he was taking into account fuel cost savings so he was cng to cng all right so public price versus his own price plus the fact that now he has got a he's got an rng credit so he's he's using yeah. renewable natural gas but also yeah. taking into account labor cost savings because he was driving in LA traffic to mm-hmm. refuel his vehicles and wear and tear on his trucks. So to him, it was the most, it was the best business decision that they've made, he said, in years. So I love that quote. And I, I love when he sells and talks to other customers on our behalf. That's really good. Yeah, that's really interesting to put into perspective of he's, he's saving a thousand dollars per month per vehicle. Right. Is that correct? So that, yeah. I mean, when, when I'm when I'm hearing that story and and we we have so many fleets and and actually for that application, I, I think it comes to to small fleets in small. Um, let's say, uh, how do you say that, like uh, truck facilities or, or that those uh, those kind of facilities are are being deployed in, in for that small amount of, of vehicle. It's kind of usual for for CNG truck and waste management trucks. And but rather than for, for example, for buses, I believe that they, we are actually uh, serving some of the of these buses of the city of Carretero. And of course they have this big, uh, when they went into CNG, they went big for the first uh, lot of units. Is, it was a uh, 200 unit uh, purchase. So they went big for, for the first time. So, but it, I believe that for the waste management applications, I don't know why, but they actually they are, they start slower. So hmm. they start with maybe one, and after a while, it could be five or ten, or maybe that fleet uh, all the way down. It's kind of ten or twelve units. So it's uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, application, specifically for for waste trucks, that the, that they have this option available. So it's really really interesting. But now you have to tell me what it's coming next for onboard dynamics uh, what what can we expect in the in the coming years rita and with all this innovation uh, you could you're probably uh targeting uh, at least projecting to target uh, new new applications or 
or new sizes? What are you guys up to for <laughs> next year? Yeah, well, so that's that's actually a really good question because, well, as you know, we just launched our latest product, which is the GoFill. And I do have mm -hmm. to mention that that was completely by customer demand. Customers asked for it. So it's great when you've got mm -hmm. a customer base saying, hey, we think you need to Uh, you you need to build this because we yeah. want to buy it. And we actually had a customer right there ready to pull the trigger to, to build our first yeah. one. Next was coming. I think I, I alluded to we want to we want to develop a fast fill uh, capability on our go flow mm -hmm. compressor. But what's also really exciting is is modifying the flow rate so that we can really go after the pipeline evacuation pi pi pipeline blowdown mm -hmm. market and just have be able to double our throughput so that we can mm -hmm. really have a a product that will um, really go after mm -hmm. the the competition in that space and then last what's really super exciting is that we are looking to incorporate a cleaning and conditioning system on the front end of our go mm -hmm. flow so that we can go after biogas applications and also stranded flare gas and we want the whole system to be electric and diesel free so it's a complete yeah. front end gas conditioning system and uh and we've we're being tapped by our friends at RPE the Department of Energy to mm -hmm. look at funding us to develop that capability. So we're very excited about that potential opportunity that we have with them to to build that that new product and have that be something that we can go after that's beyond fleet refueling, beyond pipeline mm -hmm. operations, but really going after small biogas sites that especially in remote communities and then yeah. also stranded flare gas for oil and gas operations so our you know, super good. yeah being yeah, able but, to operate mm -hmm. without electricity really opens up a lot of opportunities for us yeah and i believe that that the sizing of course of of the of your solution it's a really cool advantage for small site uh, or a small to medium sites that are actually maybe wondering if they should invest into recovering that uh, biogas or that flare gas. And that could feel, fit exactly uh, what we were mentioning before uh, regarding the CapEx and the OPEX. It's uh, it's right, it's hidden with the right spot and, and that really excites me. Uh, so everyone in the audience go, you have to be aware of this uh, this solution in the coming years i i wish you the the very best we, we're going to be following you in, in in what you guys are up to and that is really exciting for us well thank you ricardo for giving me this platform to be able to talk about my company it's uh mm -hmm. it's, i'm just it's what gets me up every day and i'm super passionate about what we're doing and and how we're addressing you know just bringing economic benefits and environmental benefits to our customers and to our stakeholders, because I feel that we all need to be doing this for sure. <laughs> that, that, don't worry. That is my pleasure to have you uh, on the on this podcast. And I don't want to go before uh, without asking, sorry, the, this question that I really love to ask everyone, that it's, uh, tell me this story, uh, It's not, not necessarily about the products, but about the process. What do you think it's a really interesting story to share uh, with the audience that uh, you happen to go through and that kind of kind of motivates us or, or, or leave us an interesting message that you could record? Yes. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Ricardo. You know, the, the story from my perspective is really just looking at the seven years that it's taken us to get from, mm -hmm. from a concept, an innovation, yeah. an idea in a professor's head to actually having a product, a piece of hardware that you can yeah. put out there into the marketplace and have people buy buy it from you and realize that when it's installed and when it's running and when it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, that 
in a very, very small way, we each have our, our, our part that we play to yeah. solve our, the, solve the problems. And so I tell my team, I'm nothing without my team. My team is everything. Yeah. And we're, you know, 13, 14, 15 people at times. And, and every day it's, it doesn't matter what they do what role they play. They could be a technician. They could be an engineer. They could be uh, pushing paper and paying mm -hmm. the bills. It just doesn't matter because collectively we're all, we're all in the same boat or the same bus or on the same rope. <laughs> as you, mm -hmm. as you know, my analogy to life is, is around that. Um, and, and we're just all trying to solve a problem and doing it the best we can. So, so I don't have any one particular favorite story, but just that, that the message is, is that, is that it doesn't matter how big you are, or how small you are, as long as you're all moving in the right direction and you're all doing the right thing to solve world problems in front of you. That's amazing, Rita. I really love that, that reflection because um, it's uh, what we can do together when we are part of a really good team trying to solve uh, no matter what trying to solve the this problem and I'm, I'm really uh, I, want, I don't want to go before mentioning that I I recently uh, interviewed in my previous one of the previous episodes uh, I will invite you to listen to it to uh, a friend from Carnot compression that it's uh, they are developing a new technology to compress uh, Uh, gases and they're starting with air and they were talking to us about how hard it is to create a new product to manufacture test to develop to get funding for a new product that you that you mentioned so shortly because we have so so little time here but you, you told us oh you about seven years and, and it, you can say it really quickly but it, it It takes real effort and uh, just uh, take, takes us to try to, to explain us in, in a couple of seconds how hard it is to develop a new product from scratch to solve a new solution with new technology. Oh my gosh, Ricardo. I don't know if I have enough time <laughs> to tell you, but I actually, I know that I know I've heard of kind of compression. So it's, it really, the, The notion that you're exactly right, it's all about how many times are you iterating and building and testing and testing again and putting it out in the field and getting hours and logging those hours and then going back to the drawing board and trying to improve. We, we have a, one of our greatest customers is somebody who says, bring your system here because I want it to succeed and I want you to to deploy it in our yard and I want yeah. to break it. And I, I was kind of shocked mm -hmm. when the, his philosophy was, I want to break it because every time we can break <laughs> it means that you will go back and you will solve it. And then you'll get more hours and more hours and more hours until finally it's, it's a system that can be that, that, that you Amazing. can sell. And having that kind of a relationship with customers or a customer or early adopters is so critical mm -hmm. because you're stuck in that valley of death of, well, my product's mm -hmm. ready to go out there, but no, I don't have thousands of hours on it. Who's going to take, mm -hmm. who's going to take the chance? Who's going to take the risk of allowing us to install it, especially natural gas compressor and be able to, and be able to run it and then break it and then fix it and then solve yeah. it and then sometimes go back to the engineering uh, design and say, okay, we got to fix that or fix this or fix that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it is a process. It's a really yeah. long process, but it's the only way that we can get products out there to solve real world problems. This is not an That's app you can put on your phone. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it's, super we are super uh like uh costume to to first let me tell you something uh, just to wrap up it's that we in, in this uh industry we actually 
tend to believe that everything is is invented already that the products are there that it's no not much innovation rather than this incremental super simple like uh, automation uh, add-on that you can add for example to your compressor to your dispensers and we uh, and, and this way i'm so excited about your product about uh, every innovative innovation uh, product that comes along it's because you guys are actually doing what no one else it's uh, taking care of and that's really important i want to to bring that up and congratulate you guys to you to your team that you are actually doing something that uh, around the industry uh, the natural gas industry is not common and not only in the united states but around the world uh, i believe that we that for example in my case i have uh, over 10 years in the industry we tend to to perceive from the instated uh, and most uh, the, the biggest uh, participants of the industry with their products they're not innovating and in almost any fashion with some hints here and there that are kind of innovating in this and putting some automation here but you guys are developing new products new technology and that is really hard and I, I really appreciate that you guys are taking the time and for the audience the product is already there i will invite you to go through through this uh to the podcast notes and see the product for yourself uh, see it working and of course uh, rita tell us where uh, our audience can find you where to contact you Awesome. I would love to do that, Ricardo. So yes, I'm Rita Hansen, R-I-T-A dot H-A-N-S-E-N at Onboard Dynamics. Go to our website, Onboard Dynamics, all one word, dot com, mm -hmm. and find us there. We, we are happy to hear from you and reach out to me as well. That's great. So thank you once again, Rita. It's been a blast uh, to have this conversation. You exceeded my expectations uh, by far, and I wish you the very, very best. Thank you, Ricardo. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. So there you have it. A really wonderful experience talking to Rita about Onboard Dynamics. And if you got this far on the episode, don't forget to subscribe and get all those notifications for our next episode. Take care and see you next time.